Is he gonna open? <laughs> I need, oh. That's weird if I ring the bell. Could you actually open the door when I... Oh, I'm sorry. It's I gonna didn't make more you sense. Were... You, you, can, you can't hear the bell? No. Ah. <laughs> Hi. Hi, how Welcome. are you? I'm good. Welcome to the Brownstone Studio. So this is a Brownstone Studio that we use in Brooklyn for BDG. We shoot a lot of different content in here. We use this space both as a soundstage just with seamless paper. We also do a lot of at-home content where it's set up as a living room or a kitchen or a bedroom or a bathroom. And then we also store a lot of our equipment here because we do shoots here and it also works as a jumping off point for a lot of other shoots. So there's some grip stuff here and then a lot of the camera and lighting stuff is kept upstairs. Let's go upstairs. Don't feel my butt. What do we have here? So in this room, kind of a dual purpose room, we have some prop storage because it's a small house. So we have to share the space with props. And then we also have some of our lighting and grip equipment, some of the smaller stuff that's stored up here, some Dana Dolly equipment, and then some of the lighting and power distro. And then in the closet, literally in a walk-in closet, we have our camera equipment stored. All right. So it's a very small room, but we got a lot of stuff in here. Okay, I see. The most yeah. important things are in this one. Um, the most expensive things are behind the, the locked door, yes. yes. <laughs> I see a lot of nice cameras. If you can choose one favorite piece of gear, would that also be a camera? I think if I had one favorite piece of gear, I mean, every shoot is very different and requires different right. things, but if there was one thing that I was gonna pick, um, probably the Aperture B7 bulbs that we have okay. out in the room over here, Ooh, if we wanna take, take a, a look. look at those. Yes. Yeah. All right. So actually my favorite piece of gear are these Aperture B7 bulbs, which come in this very lovely hard case that's also mm -hmm. a charging case, which is nice. You get eight bulbs. And then what's nice with these is that they plug into a regular socket, right? So any lamp, like we have all these lamps in the studio here, yeah. they're just standard lamps. So these get placed all around set and you wanna have practical light when you're setting things up. So whether you're able to plug these in or not, you have an app. From the app, you can turn the light on and choose any color. It's yeah. fully RGB. You can change the intensity from the app. So you can make it really, really dim, make it really, really bright. Um, and then set really any, literally any color you could think of, you could be set up here. And what's nice is these bulbs have existed before, but they would need power. So you'd have to run power to the lamp. Mm -hmm. um, and now if you don't want to have that power cable running through your set, it's much easier to hide the power cable and it's battery powered. I think you get about 70 minutes at, okay. at full, yeah. you know, at 100% of the dim. So usually if you're filming, you might only be filming at, you know, let's say 45% or mm -hmm. whatever to match with the level of the lighting that you've set up in the house. Um, so I don't know what the time would be, but it would be more than an hour of mm -hmm. battery life on here. And you get eight in the kit, so you can swap them out, be charging as you go. And if your lamp is charged in, it will charge not just from the case, it'll charge from a practical lamp as well, if the mm -hmm. lamp is plugged in. Right. So it's it's really, I mean, is it's, that is that why you went for the bulbs and not for instance for the MC Pro or? Yeah, we because we film so much stuff in real spaces, I feel like there's always lamps around. There's always something that we need to, you know, put a bulb into. And yeah. we used to have to literally carry, I mean like, you know, we still have here like a whole thing of practicals. Like this is what we used to bring <laughs> with us. Just, um, just bulbs. And it's just literally, right, <laughs> you know, this kind of bulb, this kind of bulb, this kind of bulb. Soft light. Uh, right, some yes. are soft, some are hard, <laughs> some are to see on camera, some are not to see on yeah. camera, some are daylight balanced, some are tungsten balanced, and or you'd have to gel mm -hmm. the inside of, a, of the lampshade to make it work. <laughs> and so this is obviously very cumbersome, they're very fragile, um, you don't know if they're gonna work, what if they burned out, mm -hmm. whatever. Um, so we got rid of this and went to, um, you know, a much, oops, oops. oops. sorry, <laughs> safety cables, not safe. Like in your opinion, mm -hmm. how would you say that this one is different from other vendors? Why, is there a specific reason well, why we went for Aperture? Well, there were a few things. We have a lot of Aperture equipment, like we have the Aperture 300X. Mm -hmm. um, we're often renting a 600 or a 1200 Aperture. Um, so we're very familiar with kind of the Aperture space and we have a relationship with that company already. So it's 
it just kind of made sense for us to stay in like the Aperture world. Mm -hmm. um, these are a little cheaper than similar bulbs that are on the market that also have battery power and are RGB and all that, you know, and budget is always top exactly. of mind for us. So they've been really, really helpful for us. And the art department loves them because they know that whatever kind of lamp they bring, it just needs to be a normal everyday socket and mm -hmm. the stuff we have is gonna work with them. I hear a lot of benefits. Are there any cons? The, <laughs> the buttons on the units are a little finicky to use. Mm -hmm. um, so you have to have the app really to make it work correctly. If you right. don't have the app, you don't get the full functionality of it. Mm -hmm. um, battery power could always be better, but they're, they're small. So it's, yeah. you, know, you take the, the pluses with the minuses, so. All right. What would your favorite lens be? <laughs> um, I'm a long lens person. Okay, I, I have some uh, in the other room here. Yeah, we've got some lenses here. Let me put these away. So these are the Solaire lenses. We mm -hmm. use these um, on our Amira. Ooh, um, nice so we piece. have a 18 and a half, 25, 50, 36, and an 85. Mm -hmm. um, there was supposed to be a 135. <laughs> But. Um, Solaire doesn't sell it, and I don't know if they exist anymore. <laughs> so the case, it has it in the case, but they they, were, they, it's not... It was intended to be part of the set, oh. um, and then it just, you can't mm -hmm. get it. So I'm not hmm. sure what happened there, but we end up renting other lenses to mix with the set, like if we need wider. Because you would use... I would, yeah. I mean, yeah. I, I love a telephoto lens, so I would certainly you know look for a 135 or a 180 or a 200 to have in a prime kit. Um, and also wider, 18 and a half is nice, but it's nice to have like a 14 or a 12. So we'll, we'll mm -hmm. supplement this. We'll rent, you know, ultra primes or cooks or just something you rent it, to yeah. go along with it. We rent it separately. Yeah. Okay. A lot of the stuff we shoot at BDG is on the FS7 and we use mm -hmm. Canon lenses with that. We have Metabones okay. speed boosters. Um, so we use Canon cine primes. We use, you know, traditional Canon photo lenses. 24 to 70, things like that. Um, the and Amira- Why wouldn't you use Sony lenses? Why wouldn't we use Sony yeah. lenses? Um, I, I prefer the Canon glass generally to the Sony glass. I think it has a nicer look to it. Mm -hmm. um, I think Canon makes nicer cine glass also. So when you're using lenses that are geared, so you have a follow focus on here, can be wireless follow focus. Um, all the front elements are matched. These are not Canon, obviously these are Solaire, but in a similar way, the front diameter of the lenses are matched. So you can put the same matte box on. Um, so from a prime set perspective, mm -hmm. I prefer those to what the Sony offerings are. Yeah. Um, what's nice too with the Metabones, with the speed boosters is it actually gets you a slightly faster aperture than what's on the lens. Hmm. So um, if your lens is a 2.8 on the speed booster, you might get like a T2 out of that when okay. you use that. So you, there is some yeah. benefit there. Um, some lenses don't cover because of the speed booster, so you get some vignetting, so you have to be careful about what you put yeah. on it. But any of the Canon like full frame glass fits fine on it and, and covers mm -hmm. so all the primes, all the traditional zooms that you would use. All right, and the lenses, they go on cameras. They do, So <laughs> yes. Can you show me your favorite camera, please? Sure. Well, so we have two cameras that we shoot most of our content here with. We have the Sony FS7s, and then down here we have the Airy Amira. Um, so Why the is it in a box? It's in a box because it's much more expensive. Oh, just, let's keep it safe down there. We keep it safe, it's uh -huh. on the ground, you know, it's not going anywhere. I mean, it's, the cameras are safe on the shelf, but it's, you know. Also for travel, we can put these into like a regular Pelican case or we have think tank mm -hmm. rolling cases. Um, this is a little bigger, so it needs a heavier duty case. Yes. Um, but so the FS7s we'll use for more documentary style things. It's lighter, the batteries last a very long time. You know, you're really nimble with this because it's a small kind of lightweight handheld camera. Um, and it makes a beautiful image. I and mean, when we shoot in log, so that way in post, they can take the color and the exposure in different directions. Mm, it does. It gets, to do. it gets the job done. Yeah, yes. exactly. Um, then for some of the higher end stuff, we'll shoot on the Amira, can which I, I can grab. Baby? Yeah, of course. <laughs> and I was like, oh. <laughs> 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 
Okay. So, um, big he's big. Yeah. So, you know, in the Alexa family of cameras, again, not the newest camera, but does a great job. So even for our more like bigger studio shoots, it's nice to have a camera like this. The skin tones are beautiful. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, this is the same sensor that, you know, big Hollywood movies are, are shot on and we're doing, you know, commercials, web content, things like that. Mm -hmm. um, but it's great to have access to something like this for the scale of, of projects that we're doing. And you know, I like it compared to the other Airy offerings because how integrated everything is. So I've shot a lot with, with minis also and you always have mm -hmm. to build it out. You know, there's always different accessories and rods and things everywhere. And because we do so much handheld, it's nice that this is kind of a compact, you know, it's almost mm -hmm. shaped like a film camera, like an old Aton or something where the shoulder pad is built into it and all you need is a battery and a lens and you can go shoot. Mm -hmm. So the big thing for me too is ergonomics and how the camera is put together. Yes. So like I was a very early RED adopter. Before I worked at Bustle, I was an owner operator. I had a RED camera. Um, RED was great, but I felt like a lot of the ergonomics of it, where buttons were, how it felt on your shoulder, um, where the hard drive was. I'm talking about the RED one, you know, like the original mm -hmm. tube that had a literal hard drive hanging off the back of it. Um, it just wasn't, the ergonomics of it weren't very good. Um, so I appreciate how Airy treats the camera and listens to operators, listens to DPs and puts it together in a way that makes sense when you're physically, you know, dealing with it, like where buttons are, where viewfinders are, you know, mm -hmm. I, I appreciate that side of it. Is there one piece of gear that we haven't talked about, but this is definitely worth mentioning? Well, we're using it uh, with the <laughs> Airy L5C. Um, okay. which was also sort of a recent purchase. We got it last year. Yeah. Um, it was a little dark in here, so we set it up so we could see what was going on. Um, but it is such a versatile unit and it's such a small, compact body. Mm -hmm. um, it's a Fresnel lamp, which is great because a lot of the LEDs, you have to either get an additional Fresnel attachment or it's just like a flat panel or whatever. Mm -hmm. But having a Fresnel that you can you know, spot and flood um, is obviously really nice. You know, it feels mm -hmm. like you're using an old tungsten light. Nice. Um, but what's great with these is you can also change the color, you can change the intensity. So, you know, obviously you can, you can dim, make it real dark, but then also you can change the color into all different places depending on what you need. So it's such a versatile tool where you can put it through some diffusion and it's a beautiful soft light for a portrait, or you can use it as an edge light, you know, to get some texture in the frame. You can point it at the ceiling and it lights up the room. You know, it's just such a versatile light and they make different sizes. Um, they have the, this is the L5, which is the smaller one. And so for most of our stuff that since we're in these kind of houses and small rooms, it was nice to have a versatile light like this that was powerful enough and also small enough to fit into corners and to, you know, mm -hmm. kind of use in different ways that way. So yeah, I love, I love these. They're great. Mm -hmm. Is there anything you would never buy again? Like, oof. I would, I would probably <laughs> trade out those Solaire primes. I mean, mm -hmm. if I could have a set of like Cook S4s, which are not the newest lenses, but they're beautiful lenses. Yeah. I would love to get those. That actually brings me to my last question. Mm -hmm. Would that also be your next purchase or would that be something totally different? More likely, if we're gonna make a big purchase, it would be maybe a bigger light to use in this studio. Um, often we're, light? well, often we're renting like M18s, which are like the bigger um, HMI lights, but they can still plug into a wall. We also rent the Aperture 600 a lot and the 1200 a lot. So that's a, that's a more reasonable wish yeah. list item that I could see getting soon. All right, let's yeah. keep dreaming. Keep we'll dreaming, get, yeah. yeah. One day, one day. Keep the fingers crossed for the, presentation for the full set of Cook S4s, yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs>